Welcome to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our third graders out there, though everyone is welcome to tune in. This lesson is the second in this week's series. My name is Miss Copeland and I'm a third grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Each day I'm sharing a message with one of my students in my own classroom who I'm missing. Today's message is for Brayden. Brayden, I miss seeing you every day in our class. I miss your sense of humor. You always have great ideas to share and you care deeply for your classmates. I hope you're doing well. Love, Miss Copeland. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them on tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in to today's lesson if you haven't seen our others. However, it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our lessons, since today we'll be talking about things we learned previously. Today, we will be learning about how to describe a character by looking for clues that show a character's traits. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need three sheets of paper, a pencil, and a surface to write on, the student packet for ELA grade three, lesson 12, which can be found at tn.gov backslash education. Okay, let's begin. In our first lesson on the Tales of Peter Rabbit, we read closely in order to focus on vocabulary. You have the opportunity to interact with specific vocabulary words that may not be words or phrases you normally see. Some of the words we discussed were mischief, naughty, sobs, and sieve. Do you remember what these words mean? Think through each word and make a connection to our story of the tale of Peter Rabbit. You are right. Mischief means to not behave, troublemaking. Naughty means to behave badly. Hmm, when I use the word naughty or mischief, is there a certain character that comes to mind? Yes, I thought of little Peter Rabbit too. In fact, it was Peter that sobbed in the garden. Sob means to cry hard. Lastly, a sieve is a tool used to separate things like a strainer is used to drain water off pasta. Old Mr. McGregor, the gardener, almost bopped Peter on the head with the tool. Today, our goal is to use the tale of Peter Rabbit to learn how to describe a character by looking for clues from the author's words and phrases that describe how a character thinks or acts. You will be able to read the vocabulary words in all other words to help you understand how to describe a character. We will begin with me showing you what that looks like, and then there will be time for you to practice on your own with my support. Finally, I will assign you independent work that you, complete, that you can complete after the video ends. Before we begin today, returning to our tale about Peter Rabbit and his adventure in Mr. McGregor's garden, let's review what character traits are. Remember, a character trait is a word or adjective that describes a character in a story. Some examples are kind, lazy, brilliant, helpful, and mean. To determine a character's traits, we first find evidence in the text that shows a character's thoughts, words, or actions. Then we think, how would I describe the character based on what they are thinking, saying, and doing? As I read the tale of Peter Rabbit, I'm gonna think, what clues does the author give the reader to show that Peter was a mischievous rabbit? Let's begin reading our text. Good readers focus on vocabulary and the clues authors give us about a character's traits. Therefore, we will look more closely at what a character says, does, or feels. This is how we will figure out what the author wants us to know about Peter. We'll reread the text, write a list of what he is saying, thinking, or doing, and then ask ourselves, what does the author want me to know about this character based on what they are thinking, saying, and doing? Here we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. 
They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. As a good reader, it is helpful to check for understanding after you read small portions or parts of text. Let me think through as I check my understanding. Okay, I heard Mrs. Rabbit call her children deers. While I don't call people deers, I know this word that shows love and concern. Therefore, I know Mrs. Rabbit loves and is concerned about her children. I'll keep going. Mrs. Rabbit said the children could, could go into the fields or down the lane, but not to go to Mr. McGregor's garden. When I read that, I hear the mommy rabbit telling her children what they can do and very clearly telling them what they cannot do. When Mrs. Rabbit says, I'm going out, she really means she's leaving the children alone for a while. Now I can continue reading. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Time to make notes to support my understanding. Get ready with your pencil and paper. Let's work together to start. After Mrs. Rabbit told Peter to not get into mischief, the author said, but Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. I know that naughty means behave badly. The author said Peter ran straight away. You and I would say Peter ran straight to or directly to the garden. When I hear Peter ran straight to the garden, it makes me think he didn't even consider listening to his mother. Maybe he had planned to go to the garden already. I made a note that Peter did not listen to his mother and went into Mr. McGregor's garden. Write this note on your note catcher too. This note tells me what Peter did and what he did not do. Hmm, I'm thinking that the author did not mention that Peter was a good little bunny. I need to pay close attention to what the characters are thinking and doing. This makes me think that Peter might be getting ready to do something he shouldn't be doing. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Here is another action Peter does that tells me he is full of mischief. Write this on your note catcher, too. You wrote good sentences. I heard one that said Peter was a naughty bunny because he was a vegetable thief. Excellent. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Oh no, I don't think Peter wanted to run into Mr. McGregor. Hmm, this reminds me of a sentence in the story that told us why Peter does not want to run into Mr. McGregor. I'll go back and read the sentence. Mrs. Rabbit said, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. I'm thinking of a cause and effect here. The mom tells the baby bunnies that their father was put in a pie after going in the garden. Thinking through the word pie, I usually think of a peach pie or apple pie, something sweet. I know other countries, people do eat more meat pies. Some of those pies use rabbits as the meat. Now I have a connection between Mrs. Rabbit's warning not to go in the garden and why Peter didn't want to run into Mr. McGregor. I realized Mr. McGregor had caught Peter's father and used him for a meal. Let's keep reading. 
Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. When I read this section about how Peter is terribly frightened when Mr. McGregor chased him, it makes me wonder how Peter forgot how to get back to the gate to escape. As I think about how Peter knew his father had been captured and eaten by Mr. McGregor and the same man is chasing him, I can imagine Peter being so afraid that he couldn't think correctly. His memory wasn't working when he was so afraid. In fact, Peter was running so quickly, he lost one shoe around the cabbages and one amongst or around the potatoes. Let's pause here and think about what Peter did that helps us understand that he is mischievous. I would make a note that Peter lost one of his shoes in the garden. Please add that note to your note catcher. Excellent, thank you for making that note. What could this bunny do next? After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I might, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons quite new. Now Peter ran into another problem. A gooseberry is a little round fruit about the size of a blueberry. Gardeners put nets around the gooseberry plants to keep the birds from enjoying the berries before he can enjoy them. Take a moment and add this new problem to your notes. Hmm, I wonder why the author stopped to tell us the blue jacket was new. Good job identifying the problem in this paragraph. I added the problem to, in my notes. I heard you correctly say the button on Peter's new coat got caught in a net while he was trying to escape from Mr. McGregor. Let's keep in mind Peter was wearing a new coat as we continue reading. This may be an important clue. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Let's think, you already knew Peter's jacket buttons got caught in the net and Mr. McGregor is after him. A sparrow is a small bird. Imagine the sparrow rushing to Peter and encouraging him to keep trying to get free and run. I'll pause as you take a few seconds to think back to our text and jot a note to remind you what helped Peter get loose from the net. Once again, you did it. You said the sparrow encouraged Peter to try harder to get loose and to not give up. Going back to reread, I want to make sure I understand all the words. I'll read a sentence again. Listen for the word sobs and using other words and phrases as clues, tell me what sobs means. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. I noticed the phrase, shed big tears. I know I'm crying when I have tears running down my face. Also, the author tells me the sparrow heard Peter sobbing. So I know Peter is making a noise as he is crying. When I put the clues together, that reminds me that sobs or sobbing is when someone is crying very hard. I'll make a note of that definition. Please write a sentence on your note catcher using the word sobs or sobbing. You did it, excellent sentence. You make me proud. I heard you say this naughty bunny was lost and frightened, so he began to sob so loudly the birds heard him.
There is another word that makes me pause and check my understanding. Listen for the word sieve. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop Peter on the head. The author doesn't give us clues in this sentence other than it's a tool Mr. McGregor had in his garden. It's a tool that separates two materials. You would call this tool a strainer. After this lesson, ask an adult in your house if you have a sieve. Remember, some people call it a strainer. Maybe you could even separate two items with the strainer today. Let's see what else Peter is up to. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kerchoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea of which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. As I think through the paragraph I just read, many things happen. I'm gonna take a moment to put my thoughts together. Before I do that, I go back to the phrase, upsetting three plants. Now I know Peter didn't make the, up, the plants mad, so I need to try another meaning of the word upset. Another definition of upset is to turn over. Now this definition makes sense. I can say, Mr. McGregor tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, knocking over three plants. Yes, that makes sense. Please add notes from this part of the text to your note catcher to help summarize this paragraphs, paragraph. Many things happened in this paragraph. Thank you for adding notes. You probably wrote that Mr. McGregor got tired of chasing and looking for Peter in the tool shed, a small place near a garden to hold tools. The tired gardener went back to work. Peter was damp or slightly wet and shaking with fright. Good job summarizing. Moving back to our text. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her to the way, the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He has heard about cats from his little cousin, Benjamin Bunny. Let's stop here and think back to the last paragraph. I'm thinking back in the story to the sparrows helping Peter and Peter asking the mouse for help. Yet this animal is different. The text said Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He recalled a story from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. This makes me think the story had an unhappy ending, like Peter's father. Using your background knowledge in the text, why didn't Peter ask the cat for help? Yes, cats like to chase bunnies and maybe do more damage. Good thing Peter kept going. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe, scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, 
and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Do you feel relieved Peter escaped? Whew, I did. Why do you think Mr. Mr. McGregor saw Peter and didn't chase him? Jot down a note for yourself. That's what I was thinking. I think Mr. McGregor was tired of chasing Peter and maybe he didn't think Peter was large enough to make a good sized pie. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Fortnight means two weeks. I'm looking for one more clue the author gives that tells me Peter was mischievous. You're right. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in two weeks. As a mom, I think my child losing two jackets and two pairs of shoes in two weeks would be a problem. Let's add this action to our note catcher that tells us of Peter's mischievous actions. Our poor Peter Rabbit. After his troubles, I'll finish our story. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave, him, she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Mm, his brothers and sisters got a treat for dinner. It makes me think Peter might have caused his own early bedtime without a tasty snack. Now I will ask you to work a little more independently. Throughout today's lesson, you wrote notes from the text to answer this question. What clues does the author give the reader to show Peter was a mischievous rabbit? The author has given four clues. You made excellent notes to help you answer this text specific question. What does the author want me to know about Peter? Use as many of our vocabulary words as possible. Mischief, mischievous, sobs, sieve. Were you a good detective by using your clues to figure out more about Peter's character? You might start by answering what the author wants you to know about Peter. You probably wrote something like this. Peter Rabbit was a mischievous bunny. First, the author told me Peter did what he was not supposed to do as soon as his mother left. This tells me Peter behaved badly by not listening to his mother. And when I heard Peter ate vegetables that were not his, I knew being a thief also tells me Peter was naughty. Taking food that was not his was not the right thing to do. On top of his stealing food from the garden, where he wasn't supposed to be, he lost his second pair of shoes and new jacket. The author told us that Peter had lost his shoes and jacket recently too. I think the author told me Peter was mischievous by telling me Peter had the same behavior and didn't learn his lesson the first time. Peter sure was full of mischief. Thank you for telling me about Peter. Now I've reread the text and understand the words. You have made notes on vocabulary words, major events in the story, and clues to Peter's character. Now you will use those notes to write a summary of the tale of Peter Rabbit. Take out your last sheet of paper and a pencil. Write this at the top of the page. Summary of the tale of Peter Rabbit. In your summary, be sure to include key details and vocabulary words, mischief, mischievous, sobs and seeds. I enjoyed work 
working with you on learning about mischievous Peter Rabbit and looking for character traits with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Goodbye. Five on the top and five on the bottom. Okay. And we'll make sure those are even. And I've already taken out all the ja jokers, and then the kings are wild cards. You know what wild cards are? Yes, the, um, you can pick whatever one. Yeah, they can be whatever you want. And then if you get a jack or a queen, you have to throw it away. So I'll show you. So look up here. Okay. So I've got a seven. So where would a seven go? We know this is five, so yeah. if we count up, that would be One, six, seven. Two. And I pull it up, and I got a six. That's gonna go right before the seven. Five. Oh, I'm going in order. Five. And I got a three. Two. 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 Ace. What's ace? Um, ace is one. One. Seven. I already have a seven, so now I have two. Ooh, I did good. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay. Mm, let me see if I can. Oop, the very first top card. Uh, there you sorry. go. I got a... Queen. What happens to the queen? At the journey. You have to throw it away. Yeah. Oh, Jack, what do you have to throw him away? Throw Your turn him again. Away. I have an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. I love the way you counted that. Let's see. I got a three. Ooh, where does the three go? One, two, three. Oh, you're doing really good. Got a king, and then I got a five. five. One, two, three. Four, five. Oh my gosh, we're tied. We're tied. Three in the trash. Trash. Five. Oh, I already have a five. Oh my gosh, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? I got a four. <gasps> oh, you, did you win? Awesome yes, job! I did it.